WTO is associated with long talks, various tariffs, customs quotas, imports and exports, as well as with other terms which our consumers sometimes do not understand. The task of WTO Market Program is to break all the barriers between buyers and sellers because we know everything about the prices. What problems do furniture manufacturers of Kazakhstan face? With whom does Kazakhstan compete within the WTO? And why nowadays it is more cost-saving to buy furniture produced in Kazakhstan? Within the coming years, each of us will be able to print furniture. A production line for 3D printed furniture made by means of robotic 3D printer Galatea was launched under French startup project Drone. The US upgrades its furniture factories. Lazy Boy announced about its intention to spend $26 million within the nearest three years on the construction of the largest in the US uphosted furniture plant. Dutch scientist Eric Klarenbeek invented a constantly growing chair. It consists of organic materials, straw, water and mycelium, the part of a fungus. The furniture market in Kazakhstan is very specific. The first thing to note is style characteristics. People mainly seek to buy furniture which looks luxury. These are high-tech things. It looks like furniture, but this is another area. For example, I can assemble my sofa like a Lego toy. Adults like children between 5 and 15 years old can assemble a sofa within 5 minutes like a construction kit. This is both physical and mental level. The second specific feature of the domestic market is two extreme price brackets – economic and super premium. In fact, nobody in Kazakhstan buys furniture of the middle price category. According to the Association of Furniture and Wood Processing Enterprises, currently there are about 1,000 registered sector facilities. Approximately 600 of them are actually operating, 300 of them demonstrate and active work. There are only 30 large enterprises because any furniture producer in Kazakhstan faces difficulties of one and the same type. The first one is the absence of domestic sources of raw materials. Most of our enterprises use imported raw materials. Our key supplies of parts are Ukraine, Russia and Belarus. Accessories for some types of furniture are also imported from these countries. These cheap furniture makes domestically produced furniture less competitive. The second thing is that competing with Russian manufacturers, after the accession of Kazakhstan to the WTO, the competition has become even tougher. Currently, the roadmap for the development of the furniture sector is being worked out. Finally, the furniture sector started to draw the government's attention. During the negotiations on the future of the furniture sector, at the national level, we decided to unite furniture manufacturing clusters. Even nowadays, the state is extensively solving problems of the furniture sector. In particular, it tries to eliminate the third barrier or the lack of people's confidence to domestic producers. Regional councils for maintenance of facilities, large shipments and construction of new facilities were established under local administrations. Damu Entrepreneurship Development Fund helps furniture makers to obtain easy-term loans. The support of the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs is really unappreciable. Only I came there to get a moral support, but they offered me real help. I accomplished three types of training courses, which helped me to keep documentation. A specialist from Canada came to us under Senior Experts program, and he carried out the analysis of all our documents. European specialists also provide advice to furniture makers from Kazakhstan. Machines are being purchased, facilities are being expanded due to the growing demand for domestic products. There is a high demand for all types of furniture – tables, chairs, kitchens and upholstered furniture. 
Nowadays, more and more people, instead of ordering furniture abroad, apply to furniture makers from Kazakhstan. Currently, Kazakhstani furniture makers satisfy demands of the domestic market for a maximum of 30 percent. The remaining 70 percent of furniture is imported. Russia is our key supplier. In 2016, the total value of delivered supplies from Russia was about $94 million. From Bell Russia, about $29 million. From China, about $43 million. From Turkey, about $22 million. From Italy, $26 to $28 million. And from Germany, $7 to $8 million. Italy and Germany are known as top furniture makers. Luxury furniture and its parts are delivered to Kazakhstan mainly from Europe. Currently, Poland is interested in the establishment of a joint furniture making venture in Kazakhstan. This also enhances consumers' confidence to local companies. I am pleased to note that more and more people prefer to go to domestic producers. In this case, we shall always have work and people will understand that domestic manufacturers cannot make low-quality furniture because they are here. I also think that people who buy furniture from abroad buy a pig in a poke. Another advantage of domestically produced furniture is the possibility to get a guaranteed repair at any time. In other words, a consumer can always face a manufacturer. Our motto is to create national companies producing furniture in accordance with European standards. We had a marketing program, take domestic goods to make foreign producers scare. The purpose of this program was to unite national furniture makers and create for them favorable conditions in the form of industrial trade houses and, if possible, access to foreign markets. Despite the fact that the furniture making industry in Kazakhstan is still at the development stage, the country already exports its goods. Last year, furniture exports of Kazakhstan made up $5 million. Why before buying a sofa we need to jump on it? What furniture is expected to disappear from our flats in the nearest future? And how did China become a leader on the global furniture market? Before buying upholstered furniture, it is recommended to evaluate the quality of all its parts, from carcass to upholstery. The carcass is always beyond customer's vision. However, this is the first thing we should ask about. In most cases, it is made of wood, but its ancillary parts can be metallic or plastic. It is advisable to obtain complete information about the filler. Nowadays, in most cases, it is made of padding polyester. It is quite elastic and durable, however, synthetic material. Upholstery is the final element that we have to inspect. Flock is the most common fabric used in soft furniture. This fabric consists of polyether by 30% and of cotton by 70%. This is a hard-wearing fabric with a good price-quality ratio. According to experts, in the period between 2002 and 2012, the total worth of international furniture sales increased more than two times. Between 2010 and 2015, the global market of furniture was growing faster than furniture production and reached 1% of the world output. In 2015, it made up 134 billion US dollars. In 2016, it showed a 1% increase. In 2017, the increase is expected to reach 5%. The world production is also estimated at almost $500 billion. Chinese furniture is becoming especially popular throughout the world. Currently, China manufactures about 40% of furniture in the world. The US produces 14%. Interestingly, only 15 years ago, the share of China was only 10% and of the US about 30%. Nowadays, China is the world's principal exporter of furniture. By long shot, it is followed by Germany and Poland. However, two years ago, export from China began to fall, since recently American and European importers more often give preference to cheap furniture from Vietnam. The world knew about the Chinese furniture thanks to anti-dumping measures. 
In January 2005, the U.S. Department of Commerce adopted a decision to collect anti-dumping duties of Chinese furniture makers, started to learn to apply retaliatory measures, submitting complaints to such organizations as the WTO and cooperating with the international market.